Hi, this is Cindy Cochran. Welcome to the archives of The Cindy Cochran Show. Remember, I'm live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 11, right here on IRLoneStar.com. You can be a part of the show by calling 936-647-3776. Also, please visit my Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show. And let me say a special thanks to our show sponsors, BK Myers Photography. If you would like to be a sponsor of The Cindy Cochran Show, contact me at Cindy at IRLoneStar.com. Enjoy. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. Yay. It is Friday. It is the start of the weekend, and it's gorgeous outside. I just hope it holds. And we'll be checking in with meteorologist Richard Schischler in just a moment, and he'll tell us what's going on in this area so that you know whether to uh, have to bring a you know, raincoat. Nobody wears raincoats anymore. Umbrella or a jacket or just go out and uh, hazmat suit. wear nothing. That's what I'm oh. recommending, hazmat suit. Hazmat suits. suits. Oh, uh-oh. Uh Oh, uh, it may be bad. So you have to stay with this program because he will come on and inform us in the most honest way that he knows how. (laughs) I had to choke that one out. Um, Anyway, we've got a great show today, of course, to get this uh, weekend started. We've got a female politician. She is Republican. She is so smart. She's a constitutionalist. She knows it all. And you know, I know from nothing, but it doesn't stop me from talking about it, right? And uh, that's what I love. And I'm so excited that she's going to be here. Her name is Kristen Bays. Kristen Bays on the Cindy Cochran Show this morning. And uh, so all you guys uh, get your uh, pencil and papers out because I'm sure whatever comes out of her mouth is something you need to write down. And also you can call in. That's what's so great about it. And she's not afraid to take the calls no she's not she, you want to call in and ask a question go ahead my Nine. favorite thing is when Cindy comes in and i tell her we're having technical issues with the phone <laughs> oh, that's right. and we're having power issues so if you know i'm to like warn your listeners about if they get disconnected <laughs> it's probably on me. our end wait and i'm telling you like i said i already told her i looked at you her and i told her <laughs> i'm like you cannot you gotta tell people this because we're having severe issues here Okay, and well, you didn't let me finish my sentence. She's a great sentence. politician, right? That's right. She's sitting there just promising me, all these things. And... Let me spin this um, uh, that I did. No, and I was going to tell us, I, I wish you could call in, but you can't. Uh, but uh, uh, you know that Kristen Bays is going to be on our archive list for sure. She will, uh, if you miss any of this, or if you have to go to work, or you have to go to a meeting, or something like that, understand this is going to be on archives, and you can come back and listen to every golden moment of it. Yes, you can. Listen, uh, yesterday... I actually had my husband on, Kristen. I had my husband on the show. I thought it would never happen. It was surreal to see him sitting there because he, he doesn't even listen to the show. But he, I was going to have him on the show and uh, because his best friend was going to call in and we were going to surprise him. He's had known this guy for like 55 years. And so we were going to surprise him. And so he came on, and he had a good time, Richard. He had a good time. He said, uh, that was that was fun. Now I know what you do, you know, where you go, and the people you talk to. That was great. And then we went and met him, uh, met his friend, over at the Sacred Heart Society off of Aldine, uh, Aldine Road and Whitney. It's, uh, it's like some big hall that looks like it, it would be, uh, I don't know, a hall where everybody everybody meets but they want on thursdays only on thursdays this has been going on for years and years and years and years on thursday they serve spaghetti it's a great price it's spaghetti and meatballs it's a pork chop it's the carly Bra- I, it was so good how would you know that somebody like they have to make this for like hundreds of people that come through there the line goes in like like you're Walt Disneyland, and it was just all like ridiculous waiting. But you're, it's worth the wait. And all these people are talking, 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 politics, religion, everything that, that you know they they want to. But the big poli- politicians come in there to talk to people, greet people, and all that. It is amazing. So if you ever want some good spaghetti, good spaghetti, and and conversation, y'all got to check out the uh, Sacred Heart Society in Houston on uh, Whitney Street. It's amazing. So it's a good uh, networking place. But we did that. And then I went and saw The Big Short. Now, I did this in preparation for our uh, our, uh, meeting today because, no, it was very political, but it was was great. It was a real good insight to the behind the scenes of what happened during that time when uh, when the housing housing, uh, shortage, but the housing the whole everything collapsed the mortgages and how that all happened everything was empty there was nothing there and it was just a house of cards waiting to go and it was so 
it was fun. And the a- actors, I can't stand this usually in, in movies when the actor breaks character and talks to the camera. But this is how it was done because they were explaining things. And, and they said, you don't understand what I'm talking about? I'm going to explain this to you. And they would go through. And they even had a chef come on and explain how he made this dish. This is how what was happening in the housing market at the time. It was it was amazing. It's up for Academy Award, so uh, you guys want to check out. You know what the biggest shocker about that movie was? What? Is the director was the guy who's done like all Alan comedies. Bay? Like Anchorman and Big oh, Brother, no. Step Brothers. I'm not kidding. Like he's done like Talladega Nights. It's all funny movies. Well, you know he t- and then randomly he does this movie. No, but he he put the humor in by how ridiculous this whole thing was and how it happened and it was all happening right under the nose of the government that uh, this was all there and waiting to go. And the people that were there were probably Sam's my age. It wasn't very crowded. Everybody was going to 13 hours in Benghazi. And I want to see that. I'm going to see that next. But I had seen so many Blood and Guts movies for the last two times we went that I thought, I want to see something uplifting. And so we go see this and Sam's saying, we lost our money in that. Yeah, we lost our money in that. And so he was telling me, I didn't so, know yeah. I didn't great, know we were great losing. Great movie to go see. I, know. I didn't know that was what it was going to bring up. And so anyway, we found, we found that out for sure. But uh, uh, anyway, what were you what were you pointing at? You got to tell me because I don't understand I'll just your sign her, language. Her mic's on. Okay, yeah, she could, but she's just so you know, just dwelling on everything I say, and, and she's trying to say, should I get up and leave now or should I stay with this move, this uh, show? No, no, I'm Chris, taking notes. Kristen, Kristen is taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody give you that in the script to say, you know, that yeah, that was yeah. that was perfect. But we are going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things. Uh, we want to make sure that we delve into uh, what it is as a judge that Kristen Bays is running for in the four ten uh, four hundred ten. 410th district. district court. I didn't know how to say that. 410, 410th 410 district. 410th. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> well, 410, 410th. <laughs> we get to the same place. Yeah, yeah. District. And uh, so when a woman is in such a male oriented you know, business, and especially this realm that they, they come into whenever they start, start to run and to compete. Is there anyone that's running against you? Anyone? Yes. There is? There is. Oh, my word. <laughs> How could they do that? I, that's you know, what I was thinking. <laughs> but you haven't played the woman's card at all yet. So um, we're going to talk about that when we come back. We've got a, we've got a lot to, uh, to cover, and I know that uh, Kristen just can't wait because <laughs> I started telling her, here's the things I like to find out about politicians. And we're going to talk about that. And uh, she's wide-eyed, ready to make this happen, and I can't wait. So you guys stay with us. And our special guest, Kristen Bays, on The Cindy Cochran Show. Don't go away. We will be right back. The Cindy Cochran Show. You ain't heard nothing yet. I'm Lieutenant Bob Berry with the Conroe Police Department, reminding you that drinking and driving do not mix. Drinking and driving causes an alcohol-related fatality every hour in the United States. Stay sober and stay alive. In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the Internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photography. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812. Doing business since 1985, Assistance League of Montgomery County is a non-profit, all-volunteer organization where all proceeds stay in Montgomery County. Through our Operation School Bell program, we have provided new clothes to over 50,000 students in our county. Visit our thrift shop at 126 North San Jacinto Street in downtown Conroe or call us at 936-760-1151. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Tune in to Chamber Chat with your host, Courtney Galley and Samantha Good, with the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce every first Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. I'm one of your hosts, Courtney Galley. Samantha and I will chat about the Conroe Chamber's upcoming events and programs for the month. Relax with a cup of joe or your favorite drink for Chamber Chat. 
the Cindy Cochran Show. Even if these walls could talk, they couldn't get a word in edgewise. listening to the Cindy Cochran Show. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you are a Kristen Bays fan, Kristen Bays for Judge uh, fan, you are going to have a good time today because uh, we're going to let Kristen just, you know, let it all hang out today. This is your time to say whatever you want to say and vent and uh, no, but mostly talk about what it is and why people should be voting for you for Judge. First of all, you're a woman. I think that makes you very balanced and able to uh, make decisions and you can uh, just multitask. stop laughing over there. Yeah, stop that. Yeah, Richard. <laughs> you know, I've got some people that say, you know, Cindy. Sometimes when you say something, I can hear Richard's eyes rolling, <laughs> and so you have to watch him. But uh, but anyway, uh, welcome so much to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm I'm really excited to be here. I got to come in on Monday, uh-huh. and I get to come in on Friday, so it's kind of bookends for my week, and yes. this is exciting. That's right. That's right. We're going to you know, be able to cover all around. I know you were on Richard's show, but Richard is so politically correct when he asks questions, or, or Nathan, you know, and those guys, but uh, no. Politically correct. Are yeah. you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're so, yeah. they're so I just bad. have no clue what's going on half the time. So. <laughs> you have no clue, or I have no clue? Well, who are you talking about? Talking about myself. Oh, good. Okay. Finally. So <laughs> normally, it's me that gets the brunt of it. But Well, the great thing is that's on the archives. So you've got that forever. Oh, that's The internet right. is forever. You know, he that just is, said so, it. is so true. It is so true. I wish uh, yesterday he said to my husband, uh, you're a very lucky man. And I didn't know. I thought it was about being married to me. But Sam said, well, he could have meant other things. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> No, I think he was talking about that. I have to go back and re-listen to that uh, that archive. But, uh, Kristen, you have lived in this area for how long? 20-plus years. So you know the area pretty well. If I, I say, uh, you know that uh, that light that's always out at, uh, you know, you would know where I'm talking about because you lived here and you you know the people and all that. So you have to go to a lot of parties when you're running for judge? You go to a lot of parties. Yeah. It's breakfast, lunch, <laughs> dinner, cocktail hours, candidate forums. It's just constant and busy and really a lot of fun. Does your does your mouth start feeling like you've been in a shower, you know, like a baby shower? It does. There are times that I talk about how maybe I should go and get some plastic surgery to have a permanent <laughs> yes. smile put on my face. That's I don't I don't blame you because that's hard to keep up. Up. especially like all day you have to go into different situations different people and and a lot of times they ask you the very same questions is that correct that is true okay well this show won't be that way you, okay you're then. gonna go like <laughs> did she really just ask me that no I I feel like I know that um being anybody that's in the spotlight like you are and uh, you having to it's, it's like you feel like I have to prove myself I have to convince these people I am who I am and that I'm I'm good at this and all uh is, is difficult. It, what, coming from the entertainment side, you know, and, and I grew up in Houston, and uh, then I was on television from 1972 to, you know, 81 mm-hmm. in one spectrum, and then I went on to PBS. But it was just a, you're always on a lot of times when you're out in public, people come up and say stuff to you, and like, I've seen your sign. I know who right. you are. And then they ask you some question like, so you're going to be a judge, huh? Uh, so what does that actually mean? Who are you? Who are you to judge? You know, <laughs> those kind of questions. What is that? But I do want to find out uh, in, in making a decision. Now, you ran one time before. That I was did. Six, six years ago? Six years six ago. Six years ago. And from that time, uh, you have been practicing law, not only you, but your husband as well, right? That's right. We have our own little law firm, and it's right here in Conroe, just right near the the studio here so and the name of the law firm uh, it's bays and bays which is very close <laughs> and i'm the first one i'm the first one on it. the door there just to go. be very clear about there that there you go the bays and bays bays and bays <laughs> I like that. We, we had to think about that one long <laughs> and hard. <laughs> oh, no, I think that is, that's great. Well, at least you, you, uh, you, know, you sep- separate yourself from the pack, and you go like, okay, I have my own practice. My husband has his own practice. Do you guys sit down and discuss it? Is it, is it you don't talk about any of your cases or what? Oh, please. That's all we ever <laughs> talk about. 
mean, well, I'm glad to hear somebody yeah. honestly said, no, we can't, can't talk about the cases. Oh, no. no, you no. get you get each other's uh, ideas on things, or we do. Okay. We're, I mean, we're constantly talking about what if I did this and what if I did that, and right. tweaking ideas and bouncing things off each other, and and our children just glaze over when we're sitting at dinner. <laughs> I'm always I'm, fearful they're going to slip into a coma, but sure, they tolerate sure. it. They've gotten used to it. I'm afraid. You no, know, I think that I don't think that's great. And and having mom now run for being a judge, is it judgeship or what do you say? You're running for the judgeship? Or? You know, that's funny because I've heard all kinds of things. I mean, judgeship is one that's come up a lot. I I don't know what you really call the position. It's, it's judge. You're being a judge. Just, just okay, a judge. Just a judge. And uh, and the and what you will be. Um, making decisions on is what? What kind of? It is just a little bit of, of everything. everything? Cindy. Oh, yep. really? <gasps> it is. This court is kind of the end all, be all, do it all court. It's the highest level trial court that Texas has. Not not the four tenth, but all of our district courts. And right. so they're really set up by the Constitution, by the statutes that create them to handle everything. So now I've heard you're a constitutionalist and that you have studied that you know it backwards and forwards. And this is is, is a real foundation for your ability to be able to judge it, the balance. It, it really is. And, and I'm going to tell you something that, you know, that the U.S. Constitution is is obviously the starting point for the way that our country has been set up. The Texas Constitution is a whole lot longer, a mm-hmm. whole lot more <laughs> amendments along right. the way. But, you know, that plays an important role in decisions that you make, too. So, Well, the study, you have to study this a little longer uh, because I, I've heard that from uh, uh, a lot of professors that teach, you know, teach this, and, and they go like, man, the way we wrote this Constitution and the way we amend this Constitution, and some people are, are you know, have a hard time with it, and then some like, they need to start all over again <laughs> because they got too many things on this, in our Constitution. So you have to study all that and be very up on that, right? You do. And that's it's that can be very daunting because it's really not even just the Constitution. It's all these statutes that mm-hmm. we have. And, and Texas used to have something, that they just called them the, the black statutes. And they were basically every law that the legislature ever passed, and they were just kind of in these random books, and it was always really hard to find things. And and a couple of decades ago, Texas started codifying. It's a very big ah. codifying. So we now have things that are labeled more appropriately, so it's easier to find things. So we have the property code. So if you have property issues, you know to go to the property code. So wow, it's just a whole see, bunch I'm, of I'm stuff. I'm seeing you in that library that has you know this 20 stories high and you're going in the ladder and you're going through each book and you're looking to see to find a precedent for whatever and uh and so that doesn't happen anymore it's only in the movies right well the the movies are far more interesting than the actual practice of law (laughs) there's no question about that no that's true especially some of the the cases i guess you that come before you do you see where judges should be writing books about you know, like after they're retired. Yes. What happens in front of a judge? Well, I'll tell you, one of our district court judges, and I'll just leave names out of it, (laughs) has long kept a journal. Ah. And, you know, everyone is hopeful that when the day comes for that judge to retire, that that journal will become a (laughs) best-selling book. That is great. I I think the only, the only run-in I ever had with a judge in the uh, I used to interpret the news for the deaf every morning on Channel 13. So, uh, and then I I did a show for PBS, you know, in about uh, d- teaching sign language and about the the deaf community. And I I was in there with my son. He'd gotten a ticket, and we were we were in the courtroom. Mm-hmm. And a, a boy came up in front of the judge, and he was deaf. And the judge kept saying, uh, "So and so," and he says, "Do you can you hear me?" And the, the mom said, "He's he's deaf, but he can read your lips." And he goes. What and so he can and then he put his hand over his mouth and and said something and everybody started laughing, and that just the hair on the back of my all the way up. I, was, I couldn't believe this judge just did something made fun of this, so I stepped up and I said, "Your Honor, uh, Ship, uh, I uh, <laughs> I can interpret for this for this boy. Would you like me to interpret for him?" And he said, uh, "No one asked you to come up here. You get back in the in the back there." And I went, "Well, I was just trying to help." He says, "Do you understand?" I will. Get back there. I'm t- and he just let me have it. So I, I 
went back there and the mom came around and said, uh, thank you for doing that, but we're trying to get him to be independent and on his own. I said, well, what? it's not that. I think that's great. But that judge, mm-hmm. what he just did, I think was, he was a, he was a traveling judge uh, for one of the, the regular judge. And so I went back and I worked at Time Warner during that time. And I wrote this scathing letter to them well done. that this this judge needs to go have some sensitivity <laughs> classes about how you treat someone who's who's handicapped. So I I uh, sent that letter. I got back a response for the judge that was there, and I can't say the person's name because it will get right. them in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went in and thinking, I'm boy, did I do good? And she's going to just, and I sat down and she said, if you ever, ever mention this story again, I know where you live. Okay. I know where you live. And my knees, I had oh no my. knees from my kneecap. Down, there was nothing left of my legs. And I'm going like, ah, what? And I can't believe I'm just like surreal. I'm hearing this. And she says, okay, now you can leave. And so I, I got up and went out, and I went. I didn't know what to do with that. I was afraid to do anything. And I mean, for years, I didn't say anything about that because I didn't know what she meant by that. Oh, sorry, it was a woman. Okay. <laughs> so, so anyway, that was I had that, and that was the last time, and I, that left me with that kind of that kind of feeling. I know that's not true. I know that's that was a very rare thing, and that was back in the you know like seventies. So, uh, it was. It really gave me a sense of the power that a lot of times these guys come in with and feel like, you know, and they see so much. I understand seeing so much that you get jaded by what comes before you. That's why I like the fact that a woman and someone like you who you have a personality, <laughs> you can laugh at things and, and, uh, and enjoy life. You have a family, you have a practice, you've been doing this. They can look at something when people come before you and it'd be the first time, you know, you try and look at it as the first time. Is that how you, is that how you picture it? Yeah, it, it really is. And I'm going to tell you first and foremost, good for you for telling that story right here again today, even though you were never supposed to talk about it again, because right. <laughs> You know, I mean, people really need to understand, because you're right, judges have a lot of power, and they Mm -hmm. sit up there in their black robe, and they're higher than everybody, and it's all very formal. And, you know, that's something that people need to understand, is that you need to have a judge who really does treat every case like it should be treated. That's right. It's critically important for the people that come before the judge, and the judge needs to make it critically important for the judge, Mm -hmm. because... We're serving the people. That's exactly. I mean, that's exactly. it. It's really a very simple concept. There are no unimportant cases because the people who are involved, the fact that they're taking time to come to court and whatever type of case it is, mm-hmm. they need answers. They need solutions. And they're taking it to a stranger who wears a black robe. That's right. That stranger needs to get to know them. That stranger needs to be willing to listen to them, to not shout at them. Definitely not make fun of them I mean, that's horrible i it was it was um, um, uh, i couldn't believe it i was just really surreal but but what you're saying is exactly right and that you don't judge them until you have all the facts you know that right. because you've been a litigator you know that you're hoping that wait everybody wait till you hear the whole story before you make your decision on what's to happen to this person but uh, before you when you litigate now uh you go to before juries and things like that i do right okay. i actually had a jury trial just last week see um, that's so that's so interesting to me <gasps> i'm so glad you said that oh my word i realized i just remembered i've got a jury duty thing <laughs> <laughs> now you've I'm said so, it out loud you yes, can't pretend you didn't get it no <laughs> well, you just said that. <laughs> oh my word okay cindy all right we'll see if i if i'm not here next week you'll wonder why yeah. but i've got to i've got to call it no you you guys are so great because montgomery county is so great because they they give you you know like if you're you have small children under your charge or right. you have someone you know, there's a lot of, of ways and plus your age and i'm over that age I, just, I you know but you get so excited being carded even though you're so <laughs> over the age to be carded to say thank you for doing that mean. so if i get a if i get a summons and and uh, i'm over the age to really do that that's that's wonderful <laughs> but uh, i really do appreciate what you guys must see and hear and when we come back from this break i, I what i want to find out from you is uh, before you became a judge, and you yep. have people come before you all the time that are saying they're innocent, and uh, and those that are guilty, and all. Can you can you spot it? Do you have anything that you're looking for that you can go like, this guy is lying to me. <laughs> I want to find that out. Okay, you're listening to the Cindy Cochran Show, and we will be right back with Kristen Bays running for judge. 
The Cindy Cochran Show, the first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. Our community's animal shelters cannot absorb accidental litters of kittens and puppies. Approximately 80% of the animals entering our shelters will not make it out alive. Please help be a part of the solution. Please spay and neuter your pets. Many low-cost options are available. Visit TexasLitterControl.org to learn more. That's TexasLitterControl.org. And remember, real Texans don't litter. Please spay and neuter your pets. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, Unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photography. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812. Did you know there are more than 790 abused and neglected children currently in foster care in Montgomery County? Will you help make a difference? I'm Allie Stevens with Costa Child Advocates of Montgomery County. We train and support volunteers to be the voice of children in the foster care system. Kids are moved from their home because of abuse and neglect, and we need volunteers just like you to advocate for these children. To learn more about becoming an advocate, please visit costaspeaksforkids.com. That's costaspeaksforkids.com. The Cindy Cochran Show, Real Reality Radio. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show with Kristen Bays, who's running for judge in the 410th District, and uh, right here in Montgomery County. And so we're so excited and very honored to have you on, uh, someone that may be be being called your honor. Will that be weird to have someone call you your honor? That will be weird, yes. but you, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are, and, and, and well, you should be. Um, before we went to break, I was talking about how, you know, as people, as human beings, we judge, and we do, like, first impressions of people, and we automatically judge them. And it could be something as, you know, shallow as uh, what shoes they're wearing, uh, what clothes they're wearing. You don't wear blue with black stop that or don't <laughs> blue and brown oh what's wrong with you you must be crazy and and we have these shallow uh, levels of of judge judging people and uh, you know even god said don't judge or i'm going to judge you the same way you judge other people mm-hmm. that's a strong verse in the bible to me and i i think uh, i think that's hard to do we just we just do that because we're human beings and in your case being when you're as a lawyer and people come to you and bring you cases and they start telling you their story how do you, you know, take yourself out of that realm and put you in the corner over there and then let me listen to this person with an open mind, no judging or anything like that? Well, that's really, I don't know that I really go into that not judging mm-hmm. because I think a lot of what I do with representing clients is I have to have enough objectivity to know what they're saying and how it will be perceived in court. Ah, very good. The discernment that you have, you hope the judge has. Okay. Yes. And I mean, sometimes, you know, people come in and I have to give them the bad news that we just really can't get anywhere with this. You know, I'm certainly not going to be insensitive about saying, you know, what doubts I may have Uh about some of the things that I'm hearing. But, you know, I think it's very important to let people know just kind of what you're hearing and how you're feeling about it in the sense of this is what's going to happen when you go to court. You're going to be in front of a jury and 
this just doesn't sound plausible. True. <laughs> so. Well, that's that's got to be hard well, to tell someone it that, is, and I'm sure but you have they, to do that. They come in very emotional. It, you kind of judge on when somebody. Um, tells a story to you because on on tv when somebody's being interviewed and they say well well what happened and they start telling them what happened and it's gut-wrenching but there's not a tear there's not you know they don't they don't blink during mm-hmm. that time and you go like something's wrong right or, that, or that's they go exactly or they even raise their hand they put their hand up to their eye and they you know like they're wiping something there was nothing there we know right. we watched <laughs> you the whole time the camera did not blink and so <laughs> you you do get this sense of like you're you're already judging the case. Like, I already know this guy. This guy's got to be guilty. Mm-hmm. because, But people in shock and people in, in different, you know, uh, areas of their life, you know, what, what's happened, they may react differently, right? Is everybody an individual? Do you see it like that? I do see it like that. And I will tell you, that was a lesson that I learned just when I was fresh out of law school. Uh, a law firm that I worked for, we it was a probate law firm. Mm-hmm. And that means that you deal with people who are grieving over the loss of loved ones because that has right. to do with deceased persons' estates and those types of things. And really the lesson that I learned full hand, firsthand is that people really do behave differently under stress and grief and and just something that's really a major thing for them. They all re- react differently. I mean, we would have couples come in with the loss of a child, and oh, the father yeah. would be very businesslike and would want to get everything done and get everything in order, and we're going to do this, 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 and just seemed way too businesslike to really be grieving. Mm-hmm. But he was. You know, that's yeah. that's just how he coped with it. So mm-hmm. that that was really a good lesson to learn really early on. Sure. Is that you have to go a little bit deeper than that to really appreciate the person and what they're feeling. You may not be able to make a knee-jerk reaction and well, do you have think, the right call. Do you think it's going to make you a better judge because you have been the litigator? You've been the lawyer on the other side. You're, you've uh, had judges yell at you or be mean to you or, or whatever. They, they, <laughs> they've been to you or, made, or intimidating, bullying, or, or whatever. That You're not going to ever be that way. Have you sat there and go, like, I will never be like you, judge? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> there are definitely yeah. some on my list that I, if I ever start reaching that point, I have instructed my husband to take me around back give me a harsh talking to right right so i think that's great now does he come and watch you uh in uh, you know during a trial and you go watch him during a trial do y'all do that we actually work together oh you so we try a lot of representing the same same clients right okay Okay, right i mean we don't always do trials together but we typically do and so we're there whispering at each other and I writing know, notes. Now, okay, I got to know. Do you play bad cop, good cop during this? So, you know, like, Absolutely. Do you kind of read the jury and go like, you know, it'd be better for a woman to get up and, mm-hmm. and talk right now. That's awesome. Yeah. It's just constant adjustments with sure. things that you're perceiving in the courtroom. And, you know, and that's really, that's kind of a judge's role too, is that, you know, things change as time progresses. And, right, right. You know, you hear one witness and you think, well, it's over. I mean, this this is it. I know what's going to happen. Then the next witness comes on, and you start hearing some things that make you start doubting. And Mm -hmm. it's just kind of important to, as a litigator, you sort of adjust along the way. As a judge, it's important to wait till the end to really make that final decision. Can you can you hardly wait to say sustained? I know, I'm overruled, Overruled. denied, granted, sustained. (laughs) That's my script. I've got it. That's 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 it. And uh, please, uh, jury, disregard what just happened. That's right. That's so funny when they're saying you watch trials and you go like, "What?" You know, I I I'm sitting here as a TV viewer and I can't disregard that. So what are you making? You know, make them feel like they can. And that is so funny. I mean, there's just there's a whole bunch of cases out there that say that that instruction to the jury is enough to cure any problem that existed. And I think. Oh, really? <laughs> Who are we kidding? That's, that's right. You know, that's all you need. The and bell's gonna, been rung. Yeah, and they're going to be thinking about what I've got to forget about, and I can't because I'm right. thinking about it. And you're thinking about it because they told you to forget about that's, it. Oh, so. It's so smart of the lawyer who whoever puts the question forth that knows already ahead of time the judge is going to say, don't <laughs> don't take this, don't listen to it. I think that's that's fascinating. And and why. You know, if if somebody said, but why should I vote for you as a judge? I mean, I think we've heard a litany of reasons why. But if somebody comes up to you, why should I vote for you, Kristen, to be the judge for the 14th district? Well, it really has a lot to do with experience. It's life experience. It's experience as a lawyer. It's experience as a litigator who spends a lot of time at the courthouse. It's all those experiences bound together 
that really make me judicial material. I mean, I'm I'm ready to sit on the bench, and I, I know the law. I follow the law. That's <laughs> I, good. That's I actually good. love the law. That I was the butt of many jokes in law school because I actually liked law school. So it, that's really something that I enjoy and something that I'm good at. Mm-hmm. But the list of things I'm not good at is far longer. So I can <laughs> say that I'm good at that because you know, right? But you can be honest, yeah. And that you're going to judge them as an individual is mm-hmm. huge to me. Like I take in every yeah. case an individual case. Yeah. It, everyone is, and each one is. I, I think I've now said this twice, but why not just say it a third time? Right. Each case is so important to the people who are involved in it because each case involves something that's very important to them, regardless of what it is. Maybe it's it's their honor. Maybe it's some money maybe it's their children right maybe it's not going to prison maybe it's making sure that guy does go to prison everybody there has a real stake in the game and it's critically important to them the judge has got to know that Mm -hmm. and the judge has got to join in in appreciating the importance of each and every case there are no small cases right and i think law is is though just the word law is very restrictive and 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 it's good because we need that. We need the restrictions, the barriers that we know where to go from where to where, from this point to that point, and that is set out for us. That helps us be really more, you know, we feel safer. We feel like we know what to do and all right. that. Uh, but when you have a case and there's that heart that needs to be in there with that law, and that's, you know, falls on a judge's shoulders a lot of times because they hear all the, the technical ends of it, but then they then there's a human side of it. It has to be, you know, put inside that recipe. And I think mm-hmm. that's what you. I feel like from across the table that you have and just talking to you that that's, that's going to be a part of it. Yeah. And it's got to be so difficult when you're dealing with family matters and you have these children that are involved and you, the adults, you want to slap them because, <laughs> you know what, you, you're old enough to make a lot of choices, but these children are going to have to be affected by the choice that you made. That's it. And I am... I'm so bad at you. And I love the movies where the judge says, uh, come back in my, you know, come back in my office. And they come back and they, and he talks to just the children to find out. Let me, let me find out what you feel, how, how you're feeling. And that just must be hard, really hard to do. Well, and, and I'll tell you truly, that, that's really where you need somebody with sensitivity. Because that's right. there are interviews with kids. And kids of different ages have and different tendencies. I mean, you you have to have somebody who appreciates what the age of the child, what their interests are. Are they shy? Are they outgoing? Are they angry? If so, about what? You know, all those kinds of things. And it's really just a matter of patience, right? And sensitivity. That's right. And your care. Ins- your instinct is is uh, is so good. I, I wonder. Are there other judges, and, and it could be from TV to whatever, What who have you looked at and you said, I love the way they listen or the way they talk to the people? Well, we, we definitely have some judges in Montgomery County that I think are are exceptional about that. So here's my shout out okay. to Judge Claudia Laird, who actually defeated me when I ran for oh. County Court at Law number two six years ago. But uh, she is exceptional. She And she's our probate judge. So right. she deals with people who are grieving. She deals with guardianship matters about incapacitated people who have someone that's appointed by the court to take care of them. She has gone above and beyond. She's very good to the people who come before her. She's warm. She maintains her courtroom, but she is, is warm. And she's added all kinds of programs to our probate program to take care of of the people who come before her outside of the courtroom. That's tremendous. It's exceptional. Well, I I think you said one, you hit on one thing, uh, that she's warm. Anyone coming into court, anyone coming before the judge, I don't care if it's a, if it's a ticket, you are so afraid that oh, you're going to yes. have the wrong look on your face or that you're going to say the wrong thing, and, and you're just, you know, shaking in your boots when they when that happens. No one gets so used to that. It's like, uh, yeah, what, whatever, whatever, uh, unless you've been in, in, uh, incarcerated a lot of times or something <laughs> like that. But it is it is so great to have someone understand what that person's going through, through for the first time to come before a judge and how they're going to talk and what they're going to say. And Oh, that's you know. just it. I, I mean, I've represented a whole lot of people, Cindy, over 22 years as a oh. lawyer, 
And there's not a one of them that was real excited about going to court. Right, right. You know, it, it really is. It's a very intimidating experience sure. with all the formalities and and the recognition that you're really handing the ultimate decision about whatever your case right, is about to right. somebody that you truly don't even know. And it does look like a cold process because you guys are doing paperwork. You're, you know, as soon mm-hmm. as you do something, you have to write all these papers and all this right. stuff. And you're busy doing that and, and handing things to different people and, and all. And, and the person standing there like... But what about me? Somebody right. come talk to me or hold my hand or put my put their arm around me, and uh, and it's hard. It is really hard because they feel all alone except for you. And I'm sure they bond with you as a lawyer, like you know, like people do in situations where they're uh, captured or you know mm-hmm. taken and kidnapped or something, and they start bonding with the person who well, did I don't it. Kidnap my clients, but yes, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. It's a stressful they, situation, and they go like, "Oh, is. I love you. You're you're gonna be my savior. You're the one that's gonna get me out of this." Yeah. And so they look. To you and and it's got to be do you you carry on any kind of relationships with people that after you've you've been in trial a stressful trial that they just keep sending you flowers and things <laughs> well there's plenty of going out to dinner and That's christmas awesome. gift exchanges there and, you go and there's a lot of clients who have really become very good friends of mine and you know, because you're right. It's really a lawyer is a port in the storm. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that people don't typically go to the courthouse unless, like you said, it's someone who's been incarcerated yeah. many times. Right. And it's just foreign land. Yes, it is. And they don't know what to expect. Where and, to park. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just oh, no. it's a uh, just foreign territory. It, and so, I, you is. know, I think the judge really plays a lot in setting the stage for the courtroom right. to be a place where people, they'll always be afraid because right. it's just a scary experience and but there's Claudia no cure good. for that. Claudia is good at that. You're, you're, is. you're right. And I feel you, you have the same tendency, that same personality. So it's going to be so much fun to watch you as a judge. Thank now you. listen, Kristen is going to stay with me. We're going to come back and we're going to talk a little national women in politics. Okay. We're going to, we're going to go there. Yes, we are. <laughs> I don't care. I've given you warnings. You want to turn off. <laughs> we're going to talk about it with Kristen Bays on the Cindy Cochran show. Don't go away. And Remember uh, that BK Myers Photography is one of our sponsors, and we want to do a big shout-out to Brad Meyer. Be right back. The Cindy Cochran Show. You ain't heard nothing yet. In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the Internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photography. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812. Doing business since 1985, Assistance League of Montgomery County is a nonprofit, all-volunteer organization where all proceeds stay in Montgomery County. We are proud to sponsor 10 philanthropic programs that enhance the lives of those in our community. Visit our thrift shop at 126 North San Jacinto Street in downtown Conroe or call us at 936-760-1151. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. The Conroe YMCA's benchmark adaptive programming for kids and adults is Leap of Faith. Leap of Faith is an equine assisted therapy program serving children and adults with adaptive needs. The riders in our Leap of Faith program are working to address and manage specific aspects of their lives impacted by illness, injury, or disability. The Leap of Faith program has experience working with riders who are living with attention deficit or other hyperactivity disorders, hearing impairments, visual impairments, developmental delays or disabilities, autism, Down syndrome, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, head traumas, brain injuries, and paralysis. Our program uses horseback riding to develop self-confidence and self-esteem, to increase upper and lower body strength, assist in respiratory issues, and establish a trusting relationship between the rider and their horse. Not only do these activities aid in the physical and mental development of the rider, but they also foster self-reliance and independence. For more information regarding our program, to become a rider, or to volunteer with a great group of people, Please call our Welcome Center at 936-441-9622 
or visit our website at www.ymcahouston.org slash Conroe. Lone Star Internet Radio is now bringing you the weekly business hour show each Monday morning at 11 a.m. My name is Rick Schistler and I will be your host. Each week we will be bringing you local, area, and national business news that you can use. The program will also feature an interview with a local or national business person who will share their own experiences, successes, and failures in operating their businesses. Our show is for anyone who already owns a business, whether they work solo or have employees and for those who are thinking about starting their own businesses. A bit of information about myself. Again, my name is Rick Schisler, and I am a Silver Fox advisor who has over 40 years' experience as a serial entrepreneur. As a part of our show, I will offer some advice and encouragement on our monthly topic, and I will take your questions by email at rschisler at silverfox.org or call into the station at 936-647-3776. See you on the radio Monday at 11 a.m. for the Weekly Business Hour. The Cindy Cochran Show. Even if these walls could talk, they couldn't get a word in edgewise. Boy, he's so right. But when I have guests that I feel this person needs to talk and say things, I will shut up for a little while. You're listening to Cindy Cochran Show. We've got Kristen Bays, who's running for judge in the 410th District Court, Montgomery County. And uh, it, she is, you know, she's just a triple threat. She has had the background <laughs> of being uh, a lawyer, and her husband is even a lawyer, and they've had a, a, a firm together. So she's been through the business side of it, the legal side of it. And uh, she's a constitutionalist. We love that. She's a Republican. Love that. <laughs> and uh, she is uh, is also someone who has a heart that she uh, feels like the law could use. So, you know, a little bit of that. That's mm-hmm. uh, that sensitivity and uh, understanding what, what the person's going through. Now, uh, I I know that you've you've like been watching the national races, the national race, but it's just been hard because you're you're at a you're at a debate yourself. You know, like every other night, you feel like last night you were in a debate. Right? Last night I was. So, and, and do y'all really debate? Do y'all get into it? Does anybody say? It, it, you know, things? each of these candidate forums is kind of different. Some of them just sort of involve giving a speech. Each candidate gives a speech. Ah. And Wednesday, the the Woodlands Republican Women, good shout out for them, had yes. a really great forum. But it was really more the candidates giving speeches than any kind of real interaction. Last night was the Eagle Forum. Another shout out to them. Both of these forums were really great, and so were the other forty-seven that we've done. But, um, <laughs> but last night it was far more of questions from the audience. Ah, so there was a lot of interaction, and an audience member would ask a question, and each of the candidates in my race would answer that question. So it, it kind of gets to be more of a debate format. Because well, what what was like the most interesting question? You think? Can you uh, think of one that you thought, well, you know, really, they were all good. And what they really focused on, I think, um, two questions asked about particular controversial issues, like using international law to decide cases. Uh And the question was, somebody comes before you, we have freedom of religion, we respect that in this country, and they tell you that they want their case decided under, and I'm going to say this wrong, Cindy, so is it Sharia? Or Sharia. 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 Thank law. you. I told yeah. you I'd say it wrong. I At least I knew, I knew that something. in advance. <laughs> well done. But, um, but that was the question, and my answer was no. Very good. <laughs> I'm good not answer. really sure. I said, good as I told answer. everyone, I said I could expand on that and take up a lot of your time, but why? I, the yeah. answer is no. But there is a fear of that, that, that that's coming. So there is. I'm glad and that you answered. Well, it's it. I understand the fear, mm-hmm. but that's something that judges control. I mean, right. you know, we understand what law the cases that are in front of us are decided. That's why with. it's important because we elect. And the it's judge. not that. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And we elect the judges, so you know, it's your responsibility to get out there and and elect someone that you know right. would never. Uh, but because well, you're in Texas, don't worry about it. It's right. okay. It's fine. And see, and that was one of the other questions that I thought was a good one was how do we know that you're actually going to keep your campaign promises and be who you are on the stage when you get to the court? Right. And 
you know, I, I told him there's a, a really funny opinion from Justice Scalia where he writes about how campaign promises are the least enforceable uh, binding <laughs> agreement between people. And, and I sort of joked about that. But I, I, I told the people just really what you just said, which is you're going to pick the person that you want in this race to be mm-hmm. the judge of the bench. And that's that's fine. But the good news for you is that if you feel at any time that you have chosen unwisely mm-hmm. in four years, you you get to choose differently. Yes. So I think electing judges in Texas makes an awful lot of sense. Because, I do, too. Oh, I do, too. You know, I do, too. I, you yeah. can get rid of people who cover their mouth when they hear that the person in front of them needs to be able to read their lips. That's right. I, that's the one I would have gone after first. I would have <sighs> even got out and campaigned against that guy. But I'm so glad to know that you are in line uh, to be voted on and that uh, I, I will stand in line for you. I certainly will to, to, to vote for someone that I see. I I feel this person really does have the experience through all the times of, of being a lawyer and all that, that you've had the experience of dealing with people. And now that you can still bring that personality that you've maintained over, <laughs> over all those years that, that I'm going to bring that to the bench and I'm going to make people feel, you know, comfortable and warm. But this is a law. This is a law that you mm-hmm. have broken and you chose to break this law. And if, if you show me where the circumstances or that you were beyond, you're, that you couldn't help it or whatever, well, think about it. <laughs> I'll think about it. Right. So don't, you know, I'm, just, I'm not going to say just forget about it. You're going to think about it. And, uh, and that's the kind of person I want up there whenever I walk, walk before someone and have to spill my guts. Um, <laughs> but I think that it's, it's interesting that, um, that I, I love the national uh, stage and uh, I, I missed the the debate I was I was going to record it and come back and listen to it but I fell asleep I'm sorry and um but I will I will listen to all of it but I feel like the highlights that that all the stations bring and uh that you can get a sense of what was going on what was going on last night but uh that Carly Fiorina was was at the little kids stage I don't get that at all they have John Kasich who you know he He's all the way at the end. You could have had Carly <laughs> Fiorina up there, and uh, we need to hear her voice. I think every time I listen to her talk, I, I can close my eyes and see um, the Prime Minister of England, mm-hmm. who was, there you are, there you are. Why why can't we hear, her? you know, why can't people hear her? And uh, so I I think people need to listen to her a little bit more. But I do, I do feel like... There's so many candidates. I can't imagine how long it's going to take to vote on this early voting. February 16th, you go to vote for the primary. And uh, March 1st is where we can walk into the place and, and, and That's vote. That's it. March so. 1st is Election Day. But it really, early voting is the 16th to the 26th of February. Right. So it is right around the corner. And it's a very, very long ballot, Miss Cindy. It's, it's, it's going to go on for days. It's, so. it's got to be. So many races. So. Anytime that you want to come back and talk about anything that's going on or things that people need to know about that that uh, the law has has added some <laughs> new amendment to it or whatever <laughs> that we need to know about or that you just need to you know calm the fears of people that ha- that they have about things that you're hearing, uh, please come back. I, I would love to talk to you again. Oh, I love hearing that because, you know, I'm, I'm really I'm probably going to fill out a job application to you, come. Yes, you, sh- yes, you <laughs> come should work for you guys. <laughs> before I leave. But I, I really appreciate you offering to let me come back in. And I would well, absolutely love to. And it's been an honor for me to be here with you today. Well, and it, it thank is you. our honor. And please go out, vote for Kristen Bays for judge. I'm just like that. And Richard <laughs> Schishler, uh, owner of Iron Lone Star is the reason that we can bring you know you guys on and he's been so you know generous about letting everybody come in because you need to know what these guys stand for before you vote for them or women (laughs) especially (laughs) you're listening to Cindy Cochran show you guys have a great weekend go out and enjoy this beautiful weather if you live around here and uh, you know what vote vote think about who you're going to vote for and and study them all right we'll see you Monday Thank you for checking out a podcast on Lone Star Internet Radio. Lone Star Internet Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas. If you are interested in sponsoring a program for Lone Star Internet Radio, just visit us online at IRLoneStar.com or message us on Facebook. We are always taking song requests on Twitter, and if you are interested in getting involved with the station, by either hosting your own show or if you want to be a DJ. 
Just contact Dick at dick at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Internet Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station.